here uh, from his collection, and this is week 10 of Warring Wednesday. All right, we are going to dive straight in and hear um, what is on the Lord's heart today and maybe what word he might have for you. All right, I give you boundaries because I love you. I gave you direction because I want what's best for you. I answer your questions because I want you to know. You can trust me. You can follow me and you can rely on me. I know the struggles you are in. I know the temptations which come your way and I know the posture of your heart. Together, we are stripping away the areas which have kept you caught in the trap by shining a light on them. It's not a comfortable process, but it is an essential one. It's essential to walk through them because it's the fire which is refining you. Sometimes it will seem like you cannot bear the heat of the moment. But when this time comes, cry out to me, remembering I am right there with you, standing in the fire, shielding you from its burning embers. This act will draw your attention back to me and open up your spirit to receive me. Okay, so we've got lots of good nuggets that we can dive into there. Um, but before we do, I prayed and asked the Lord, okay, God, what, what is the scripture that, that, um, that goes along with this and that you want us to share this week on Warring Wednesday? And he actually woke me yesterday, um, yeah, yesterday morning, and I, like, in my spirit, it was just full of 1 Peter 2, 1 Peter 2. So he took me to this yesterday and then, um, and then after getting the, after spending some time with him this morning, I knew like, okay, God, this is, this is what's on your heart for this week. So we're going to read, I'm reading from the Passion Translation, by the way, um, and we're reading First Peter chapter two, uh, verses one through one through 10. All right, here we go. Um, if you're looking at the Passion Translation, it's titled growing in holiness. So abandon every form of evil, deceit, hypocrisy, feelings of jealousy and slander. In the same way that nursing infants cry for milk, you must intensely crave the pure spiritual milk of God's word. For this milk will cause you to grow into maturity, fully nourished and strong for life especially now that you have had a taste of the goodness of the Lord, Jehovah, and experienced his kindness. So keep coming to him who is the living stone. Though he was rejected and discarded by men, but chosen by God and is priceless in God's sight. Come and be his living stones who are continually being assembled into a sanctuary for God. For now you serve as holy priests, offering up spiritual sacrifices that he readily accepts through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, look, I lay a cornerstone in Zion, a chosen and priceless stone, and whoever believes in him will certainly not be disappointed. As believers, you know his great worth. Indeed, his preciousness is imparted to you. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected and discarded has now become the cornerstone. And a stone that makes them stumble and a rock to trip over. They keep stumbling over the message because they refuse to believe it. And this they were destined to do. But you are God's chosen treasure. Priests who are kings, a spiritual nation set apart as God's devoted ones. He called you out of darkness to experience his marvelous light. And now he claims you as his very own. He did this so that you would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. For at one time you were not God's people, but now you are. At one time, you knew nothing of God's mercy because you hadn't received it yet. 
but now you are drenched with it. Man, I love the way the Passion um, translates that, that now you are drenched with it. And how true is that? And um, you know, how often do we even think of it like that, that now that we have the presence of the Holy Spirit, which is that impartation of God's Spirit on his children, uh, which is where the holiness comes in, right? Like, um, I'm going to backpedal a little bit, but um, we, you and I, followers of Jesus, believers of Christ, of God, um, who have the Holy, the presence of the Holy Spirit with us, by his presence, we are made holy. Just like when Moses, right? When Moses comes onto the land and he realizes he's standing on holy ground and he has to take his shoes off. And he's not, it's not um, Moses who made the ground holy. And it's not that the ground was inherently holy, but it's because the presence of God fell upon that land that made it holy. And the same is said for you and I, that we are a sanctuary to God. We are a dwelling place for him. We are temples that he is residing in. And through the presence of that holy, of his Holy Spirit, it makes us holy. Like we are walking around um, in our day-to-day -day life, you know, going to work or going, you know, dropping kids off at school, going to the grocery store, going to the gym, whatever your normal day looks like. Um, and you're walking in holiness, not because of anything you did, but because of what he did, because of that sacrifice on the cross, because of the sending down of the Holy Spirit, that as his spirit rests on us, that we are made holy through that. And which is why at the end of um, 1 Peter 2, 10, verse 2, 10, because you hadn't achieved it, but now you are drenched with it, right? Like now you are drenched with the Holy Spirit. So no matter where you go, like you can no longer escape that. And part of this refining process, if we go back to the first reading and what even first Peter two is talking about here, especially at the beginning, abandon every form of evil, deceit, hypocrisy, feelings of je jealousy and slander. Um, and that this is a time, right? This is a season uh, in your walk, in your life, in the world, for us to cry out for that spiritual milk, to cry out for it, to get our hearts and our mindset and our life into a place to where we are crying out for that spiritual milk. And it's so awesome to see how God does this. So back to the refining process. Um, you know, we all walk through those trials and tribulations. We all have storms that will inevitably come our way. We've spoken a lot about this or about that in previous episodes on here that, um, you know, we're to count it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when we face trials and tribulations, because we know that they are building our endurance. And, um, and we can even see God's hand in that. Like maybe God hasn't caused the storm in your life, but he might have led you to one. He might have actually led you to one or allowed you to go through it because it's through that fire, through that trial, through that, um, storm that that's where your faith is being perfected. And that's where he's actually opening our eyes up to see like, oh yeah, I still, I'm still struggling with that. You know, I still have this root of bitterness or I still have this root of jealousy. I still have this root of unworthiness, you know, trying to battle it out inside of me. And so God will take us faithfully to those storms um, in order to open our eyes to see the areas where he is trying to bring light to maybe to where there's still some darkness going on. Um, but what's so important about that moment and as we're facing this and this moment may not, or uh, the moment for your life may not be, you know, a singular day or hour. This might be months of your life. This might be years of your life. Like it might be something that you walk through and you think that, okay, God, like, yes, made it through that one. Thank you. Done. Like, um, I, you know, I'm past that. And then sure enough, what happens, right? Like rears its ugly head again, because God is trying to show you like, Hey, we haven't fully removed all of that. And there's still some growing in that process. Um, but just like the story in the Bible of, I might get these names wrong, uh, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> yeah, you know, they're in the fire. Um, and then when we look at the scripture, it actually says there was a fourth person in there. When the king looks or the people look, like there's a fourth person in there. And that was Jesus. That's God. That's the Holy Spirit. And that's what we have too, that even when we're in the midst of the fire, when we're in the midst of the storm, we're in the midst of the chaos, that 
His presence is constantly there. Nothing changes. And so whether it's a storm that God has a, like taken you to, whether it's a storm that you have chosen because there's still some worldliness going on, there's still some, you know, that struggle with sin or deceit or, um, you know, wayward thinking, double-mindedness, you know, whatever has taken us there, we have to remember that in the midst of it, God is still present, that he is still faithful, that the storm does not mean that his presence has changed at all. And, and that through those times that we fall back on that battle strategy of praise and thanksgiving. Thank you, God, for taking me to this storm. Thank you for holding my hand through it. Thank you for the fire of refinement. And that we begin to ask him, you know, what are you showing me? What are you showing me? Because now that we are children of the kingdom, now that we are his chosen ones, nothing is happening without his sovereignty over the moment. And nothing is happening out of um, happenstance or coincidence. Like God is, if God is talking, taking you to something, he for sure is going to take you through it. And there's a reason for it. Maybe it's something he's showing you in your life. Maybe it's something he's showing you in your spirit that he's trying to get out. Maybe he has you there for somebody else. Maybe it's so that you can walk through something so that then you can, as 1 Peter uh, 2 says, that you can glorify him because once he takes you through that fire, through that storm, you can proclaim his goodness to the nations. You can share it to the world. You can post a testimony on your, um, on your social media. You can write a story out about his goodness and how he brought you through that. And through that sharing, we're truly honoring his word. We're actually walking out the scripture here. Here it is. Uh, First Peter 2, uh, 2, 9. So you are now God's chosen treasure. That is who you are. That's your identity. You're priests who are kings. You're part of a spiritual nation um, as God's devoted ones. He's called you out of darkness to experience his marvelous light. And now he claims you as his very own. He looks down and he's like, that one's mine. That's my girl. That's my boy. That's what he says about you. Um, and he did this. Here's the key part. He did this so you would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. So guys, if God is allowing a storm to take place in your life, if God has brought you to a storm, there's a reason for it. It's not just some, oh, well, you know, I feel like they need another mountain to climb or they need to, you know, circle around that again. There's a reason behind it. And it may be for yourself. It may be for future generations in your family. It may be for people around you in your sphere of influence. Because um, as we begin to share the goodness and we begin to release the testimony of how God took us out of a storm, out of darkness, and brought us into light, he's allowing us to be vessels who are helping to set other captives free, to bring his children into the fold um, and begin to awaken them to see like what God says about them and that light that they're actually holding inside because we are living stones. Um, so two more things. Uh, this concept of living stones. A few years ago, God gave me this awesome, awesome dream, super awesome dream. And without going into all the details, he showed me these four large boulders. And guys, you have to know, like, I know this is a like there's layers to this and I, I know like God has only shown me some of it. So I'm waiting for the, for him to continue to reveal. Um, but there were these four large boulders and I'm in the middle of the woods. I mean, truly the middle of the woods. And then suddenly it, the area just opens up and there's these four giant boulders to where they're like a very hard, rocky exterior, like a dark gray color. And from each of the boulders, I can see that there is this light in the center of it, this like beautiful light. Each one's a different color, purple, green, red, blue, in that order in particular. And that the light is just bursting like through the rock exterior out, right? And each of them shining their own. And as I prayed over the years, I mean, I had this dream. He gave me this dream back in um, 2017, I believe. I have to double check the date. I wrote it down. Um, but since then, you know, I've been asking him, Father, what does this dream mean? Like, what, what are you showing me? And, um, and it came back to me yesterday as I was reading 1 Peter 2. Because at the beginning here, it says, 
Oh, so keep coming to him who is the living stone. Uh, come and be his living stones who are continually being assembled into a sanctuary for God. And that's just how I feel like he sees us sometimes. Like that light, we have this beautiful light inside of us because the Holy Spirit resides in us. Um, and we're each kind of shining at a different, maybe a different color, maybe a different uh, intensity, you know, sometimes depending on our moment of when we're full of his spirit and, and when we've allowed it to leak out, like we've talked about previously, that light may grow like more dim or bright, but the light never goes out. And, um, and that rock around us, that giant rock is the world. It's our flesh. It's everything that we've battled against. It's all the lies that have been spoken into us over the years. It's the, the mistruths, the missteps, the, the, you know, maybe condemnation that we allowed ourselves to walk in or shame or guilt or things that we've carried that were not for us and, and definitely not from him. And, um, and this, this whole concept of walking through the fire, it's just part of breaking off that rocky exterior so that our light is just getting bigger and brighter and more easy to see. All right. Um, I have one other testimony I feel led to, to share. And it's, it's truly walking out the scripture of in one Peter two about now let's, uh, share the broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. So here's one wonder that God gave me. So check out this book boundaries. Yeah. Many of you have probably heard of it before. It's written by Dr. Henry cloud and Dr. John Townsend. Now here's the cool testimony. So at the very, the very first line that we started off today was, I give you boundaries because I love you. Um, so this book was gifted to me in 2005. That year in particular, actually 2006, uh, that year in particular, I, one, did not have a relationship with our father at all. Um, I probably would have deemed myself an atheist at the time. I definitely was like arguing with people trying to disprove God and hello, look what he's done today, right? Um, so quite a journey, but What's so neat is that this is actually one of the testimonies of how I saw God's hand in my life faithfully from far beyond the moment that, that I came to him, that he knew I would come to him. And I can look back and see this is one of the many ways where he was just so gently knocking at the door, trying to get me to open it. And, and what did I do? I was gifted this book. At the time, I was a high school English teacher. And when I got it, I saw the pencil on the cover and I was like, I guess they gave me this because it has a pencil on the cover. And I took it and I put it on the shelf. I mean, literally just put it on the shelf. This darn book sat on my shelf for 10 years, 10 years. And then finally in 2015, when I cracked it open and began to read it for the first time, I just broke down in, I mean, the best of ways because during that 10 year journey, um, one and probably most importantly, I came to Christ. I realized that all those years prior when I was denouncing or doubting or, you know, all those things that man, God was super graceful with me and gave me a lot of mercy or showed a lot of mercy. Um, but that, that, I, that it was completely wrong. And, um, and I, so I began to have or walk in my relationship with with the Heavenly Father, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. And so in 2015, when I opened this book, I realized, wow, God, wow. Like you were actually trying to save me from everything that I was going through then because it was definitely my will and flesh and sin that was leading me at the time. And, and this was God's way of trying to get to me, trying to actually get me to open up to him and, and, and save me from what I was steeped in. Because man, as soon as I started reading this, I was like, wow, the eye opening. I, um, I realized I had something that was called reverse boundaries, which means that we tend, uh, people with reverse boundaries or who don't grow up with, with healthy boundaries, you tend to like invite in and bring in things that are unhealthy for you. And then you tend to push away the things that are actually healthy for you. I mean, it's truly reversal of boundaries. Um, and that's where I was at that, in that season of my life back in 2005, 2006. But God is so faithful that even knowing like where I was and in the midst of, all, midst of all of that, he was trying to send me a lifesaver. Like he was trying to send this to me, trying to give me that flotation device to come up. Um, but my will at the time was to put it on the shelf. So what's awesome now though, is that now he's gifted me this testimony to be able to share with you and whoever else you feel led to share this with that, 
you know, this is how, this is just one small example of the goodness of our God, of our father that we can broadcast out to the world. Um, and I would challenge you to, and I don't know if you've always grown up with God in your life or, um, if you're early in your journey, if you're more mature, you know, in your walk watching this, but look back and see like, where have you seen his hand? Where have you seen the goodness of the Lord? Where have you seen